when HBO first started its programming, you know, now they put like the kids' movies during the day and they save the adult fare for night. You know, Jay and I would wake up uh, eight thirty a.m. on a Saturday morning, turn on the TV. There's Sophie's Choice. All right, we'll watch this. Uh, we're gonna roll right into Kramer versus Kramer. Okay. Um, ordinary people. Great. Try that one out. Just Fruit Loops and hard-hitting relationship <laughs> yeah. dramas yeah. with divorce. Yeah. <clears throat> And for All of our, yeah, our friends were watching Star Wars, and we would, I mean, you know, we were just kind of like neighborhood kids. We would just ride our bikes, watch TV, um, and our, you know, our friends would be talking about Star Wars, and we'd go see that stuff, and we were just kind of like, uh, I don't know, I don't get it. There's this monsters and stuff? What's, where's a divorce? It, it didn't, <laughs> yeah. And we would. We would watch Star Wars, like those movies in groups with people, and we'd be like, yeah, it's fucking awesome. We're like, where's all the feelings? What's happening? And we, we, I think it just, it, it kind of happened to us. So it wasn't like we were raised by, um, you know, NYU professors who were like, oh, this is an erudite household where we will only focus on these things. We were just dumb kids who happened to soak in this thing that changed us. And so as we started making movies in our teens and stuff like that, we just found ourselves matriculating and, and drifting towards that sort of hard-hitting relationship stuff. And I guess the next phase that we sort of entered was when we saw Raising Arizona in a movie theater on vacation in 1987. We, it became abundantly clear to us that a person, or in this case, two people, had made this movie. And it, and it was the first time that we could perceive and articulate that we could actually like perceive the personality of the filmmaker, and we didn't know what a director was until that movie. Well, let's clear up that myth a little bit. This is, Jay's 11, I'm seven. Jay's telling me all these things, and I'm seven watching him, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say anything you want if you want to hang out with me. <laughs> and so I just follow Jay headlong into this thing and, and, and resoundly worshiped him because he would let me hang out. And I got this great education by being seven and being led by someone who would like show me all these movies and then we'd listen to David Bowie and I was like, yeah, you know? And so it wasn't until much later that this was a true we. Jay was really driving this train early on. 